the okay, okay guys and ladies it's uh the, the, gender queers that could then that, whatever that demi fluid semi gender yeah so this is not an episode of radio really thing um flies yeah oh. my Lies foot almost them. fell down hmm we're off to a good start. Yeah, why would you do such a thing? Why would you drop your food? I caught it. I did not drop the food. Well, you dropped what? it on your hands, I guess. No, it's I tried to escape. It's okay. not very professional of you trying to eat food while recording a podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to. Or drinking, I, I, like I, I do. I, I am eating very intently, professionally. Anyway, so in this episode of Ray Rothingham, we got the following co host It's yours truly, the Artrix. We got Zaverius, who just dropped his food, but not really. I did not drop the food. I did not. Yeah. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Mark. We got Seckler, the Seckler. Present. We got the one and only Irishman, which is very relevant today, Mr. No. Penboy. <laughs> and we got the German backphone, who is German. No. Did I mention he's German? No, not at all. Okay. Not in the past 20,000 episodes. Mm -hmm. Well, I will note that he is in fact German. I thought he was French. Well, well, you see, when you take the Germans and the French and you combine them, you get this small country named the Netherlands. And they did something very terrible last, last week. They like, existed. Oh, yeah, well, weren't you having some kind of election? Exactly. We had an election, so so I went to. I don't to... even care. I heard, but I didn't hear. Well, you long. you see you see see ah. the polling the polling booth is like right on on my way to the grocery store. <laughs> so it's like you know what? Since I'm out anyways, walking down to the grocery store, I might as well vote. Why the fuck not? So I walked so are in you there. The Nazis now? No, uh, no, no. We're not Nazis. I mean, oh. as it. Everyone was afraid that... But it's very important to keep track of your bills in that case because you might accidentally vote with your money and then try to pay with your vote. <laughs> and then it turns out my vote is actually worth one billion dollars. And like, sweet. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that's probably not the case. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. I mean, I, I would have cared a lot more if that was actually the case. So, you know, I went in there and I was really disappointed once again. Last week I was disappointed because there weren't huge as protests going on and there weren't, you know, no, there weren't like hordes of people trying to stop me from attending a rally. This time around I was disappointed that there weren't entire groups of people waiting outside trying to stop me from voting or, was... you know, Doing all that sort of thing. It was the most mundane shit ever. Like they didn't I went, even stop me. Now I have they to didn't vote. even. I. They didn't. Yeah. I know. I have to vote because no one tried to stop me. I went to the library and there was not even a line. I could just walk <laughs> up there. Nobody cares. <laughs> I could just walk up there. I ended my voting pass thing. You know, like yeah, here's the, the vote sheet. Now, now call one not... of the dots and and GTFO. Patrick was the only only one in his country who voted. Yes, probably. So this is why the Artrix party now rules the Netherlands. Um, but but I was already I, I I was bored with it, so I I did an impromptu uh, election again, and now we have the official results. You, um, you say that like a joke. You did an impromptu, you did an impromptu coup in the favor of the opponent. Is isn't your country a constitutional monarchy? It is. So. Your rulers are literally born into it, or they could choose to be if they decided to any day now. No, they no. could just decide. You know what? Fuck the constitution. We're the royals. Fuck all y'all. We're going to war with Mexico. Okay, that that is not entirely true, and this is why. Uh, there's a very odd peculiarity about the Dutch uh, constitution. Why the scenario you just described will not happen, because. Well, Okay, so we do have a king. He's currently King Willem Alexander. And um, if he's like 
yeah, I, I don't feel like like doing this, then there's going to be a mon uh, constitutional crisis because the the monarch and the government are are the government, like they they are one. So if if one of That's the two parties together, so if one of the two parties disagrees, then we have a huge problem. Huge. Yeah, because the the like for instance, if the government if the government uh, drafts a law and it's democratically ratified and everything, like it goes through all the motions and well, this is a legit law that was voted in by the government, which is the people. It is a law now, and the king has to sign it. And if the king is like, "Fuck that noise," then then there's a big problem because it's like, okay. But the, the, the king is the government, and the government has drafted the law, and the, the, the error the script. And then there's probably going to be new elections, because the government needs to be disbanded, and there's <laughs> going to be new elections. I'm not seeing how this stops the, the king from declaring war on, Russia, uh, on, on Mexico. The, In fact, what, the, what you've just described means... The, the government can't declare war on Mexico unless the king wants them to. But the <laughs> no, the king, the, no, my... the king, the king cannot buy his buy uh, on his own declare war on Mexico. He why cannot... not? You haven't described why not. You've just described why the government can't. Be because the government and the king are one. If the government's like no and the king is like yes, then it's not going to happen. Because yes, but but the way you just described it is it will go like the following. The government says, no, you can't declare war on Mexico. The king says, I disagree with that. The government then gets disbanded. Then a new government comes in. And then the king says to that government, can we declare war on Mexico? And they say no. And then the government gets disbanded. And this keeps happening until you get a government that's willing to declare war on Mexico. Yeah. So it's like, it's like EU. But by the exactly. time it actually gets to the point, I, I, I guess it already doesn't make sense anymore. No, I... it always makes sense to declare war in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Remember and, and... the Alamo. Anyway, anyway, to, to get to the point. So everyone apparently expected the Netherlands to go full Nazi. Like the, the, the PVV uh, I, which yeah. the PVV which is Geert Wilder's party oh. was well, every it... everyone who doesn't live in a country that has a real political system. And by that I mean just two parties. <laughs> Because for some reason there are countries that manage to have people to vote for two major parties. Which it, I don't understand. This is kind of funny because a lot of uh, Americans that I've talked to during the past um, few weeks are like, holy shit, you have so much to choose from. Like, there's and all these are, parties. And, and they're and... all shit and full of tears. <laughs> Well, that's just that's just the general drift with politics. Oh yeah, there's there's not a single political party on this planet that's not full of thieves. Mm -hmm. Even Greenpeace, who pretend to be the most friendly, environmental-loving par party on the planet. Wait, Greenpeace isn't a political party. Of course it is. No, it's, well, yeah, it's, they do it's... have they do have gr so-called green political parties around the world. Yeah, the, um, actually, actually, the um, the the Greens, um, the, the, if the election, if the results of this year's election or anything to go by is that the, the the citizens of the Netherlands are really fucking concerned about the environment, and and I'm, and I'm like, why would you, why would you do that? But you know, apparently a lot of people care, so fair enough. Well, guys maybe because the environment can kind of kill them, you know, since a lot of the Netherlands is actually below sea level. Good point. We must destroy the environment completely so it can't kill us. We well, that is a fair point, but... The we must destroy the environment completely so it kills Netherlands. That too. That's yeah, but, but there, there's a problem with that. I mean, the, the sea's been trying to kill us for for decades, if not centuries. For and tens of thousands of years. Yes, for, for and millennia. You are and we I'm, are I'm, I'm, still I'm, 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 fucking here. I mean, I'm pretty sure the sea was dead in the last 50 years at least. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, the sea tried, you know, it, it invaded and we told to GTFO. 
Do you think that the sea was an ally of the Nazis? Fuck yeah, it was. I mean, it was it was it was probably like um, you know the, the war just ended, and then in in 1953 it 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 just happened again. They were they were <laughs> like you, you, the the sea was so butthurt of being defeated that it was like you know what fuck it I'm going to flood this this country that's now free and not Nazi. We're flooding it and and now it will have to become Nazi again. But it it didn't work. Because the Nels like, fuck off. <laughs> Fug off. Does it often work, you know, trying to flood a country into Nazism? Mm -hmm. you see. Is that a successful tactic? Maybe we should try it. Uh, it's not very successful when you deal with a country that doesn't have a coastline. No, oh, that's a shame. You, you need to demolish a few countries to get the coastline to them. Although technically Slovakia can do it to Hungary. Thanks to the Kapchikovo Dam. <laughs> like, Slovakia has this one huge dam near the Slovak and Hungarian border. And basically all of North Hungary is below water level of that dam. <laughs> if oh, we okay. blow up the dam, half of Hungary is gone. Now that's just me. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a safety switch. If Hungary does something that Slovakia doesn't like, it's like, bye. Can expire. bye? Exactly. And then they died it. And then uh -huh. they lived. Uh -huh. So yeah, um, basically the results are um, the media is trying to make you believe that the uh, that 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 Gilt Wilders was BTFO and holy shit, he, he 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 like he really lost and he has nothing nothing and, to and, do and with. And now, now now you at least won't get a mandatory visit at the hairdresser. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're like, yeah, he was fucking defeated. Like, he can't do jack shit. He's so defeated. While in reality, it was like, okay, uh, Gilda's party might get like a majority or like a significant portion of the, the, um, the party. Significant but minority. As it turns out, he actually gained a few seats and he's still a formidable force. But oh, no. he. I mean, he, he have his party like thirteen uh, percent. He, he can't exactly rule the country with an iron fist, and he's probably not gonna end up in the coalition anyway. But it's not like he's he's a small fry. He's still got like twenty seats out of one hundred fifty, which is quite significant. That's kind of like the Nazis over here. <laughs> that that is quite a lot, actually. If you know, they got like... Uh, well, well, except except the difference between Slovak Nazis and, and Dutch Nazis is that Dutch Nazis just want to, down, go on, uh, to do away with Islam. And the Slovak Nazis are like, fuck yeah, we are Nazis. So yeah, um, and um, another result is that the, the left is incredibly fractured right now. Because uh, the Labour Party, and this seems to be a, um, let's just say that a pattern emerges a pattern develop, develops because apparently in the UK the the, the, um, the Labour Party is um, not really doing all that well and the same is, is going on in the Netherlands where Labour has essentially yeah. just become um, the Conservatives bitch so it's like yeah whatever you say Conservatives as long as we can you know be in the coalition and as long as we can Labour and so it's funny when you get like um, parties that have mutually opposed positions trying to ally together. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, well, if we're if we're together, we'll get enough seats to be a government. Okay, uh, how about we pass this legislation? Like, this sounds like Germany since two thousand and five. But yeah, pretty much. That, that's like, like pretty much the two. This like, sounds the like this, it party. sounds like any state that's not a dictator or USA. Mm -hmm. But but what always seems to happen in these coalitions is uh, nothing happens because the two parties fundamentally cannot agree with each other. <laughs> Thus, they're like, we want to pass this legislation. Then the other party's like, no, that's retarded. I, they, they can't get a majority because they both hate each other. <laughs> For some reason. Kind of like when the liberals and Christian conservatives formed a coalition over here. 
so so we got so they they got uh, you know the, the 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 people have spoken they were like fuck off you guys suck but they also Google. said but they also said uh, conservatives you guys are just peachy even though they also suck but most people are too stupid to understand that i guess they're like oh yeah i i i was going to vote kill this but he's uh he's a bit extreme so i'll vote the lesser of two evil i'll just vote conservatives it'll, it'll it's it's like soft vote for wielders <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are just afraid of his power over her, over the might of peroxide. Also, what happened is that the the what can officially be dubbed the official aggressive part of the Netherlands has gained one entire seat. So if they, there's three seats of aggressive leftist party in the Dutch government right now, but there's also a new party that I actually voted for. They got two seats out of fucking nowhere. And now, party. well, they could voted for the matrix. Yes, and now there's two people sitting there, basically going problem. It's like we're government now. <laughs> we're, we we're, we're we're in we're in your parliament now for the next four <laughs> years. Isn't that fun? This chair is ours. <laughs> and and they'll all just draw rare rare peps all over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah, that, that's all you'll have. When 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 you when when the next government comes in, they'll be like, why 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 are Pepe's scratched into the back of every chair? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like Yes. But yeah, now now that's become very apparent that voting for Wilders doesn't really change all that much. Maybe more people will vote for this party next time around. But now they have like four, up to four years to show the world, look, this is what we can do. So who knows? Oh. For all we know, they just really fucking suck. And I'll, I'll, I don't know, I'll, I'll guess I'll vote. But by. they have like, what, 13 votes out of 150 they'll still if they actually want to get anything to happen they'll still need to get a lot of other people on their side mm. yes like so it's not it's not the end or beginning of anything significant i would say no it, it, it it's pretty much back to the status quo um but it's going to be difficult to form a coalition though because uh, the the parties that did come out being the biggest are all very fractured and all very different from one another. Uh, one of the bad results in in my eyes is uh, the victory of the D66, which is basically like, uh, the EU is good. We should have more EU. Like, let's build the EU super state. It's going to be peachy. That sounds awful. Yeah, those those fuckers are, are now, they have like 15 seats. So they, well, they're in a really uh, good position to, like, um, get in a coalition now. Because, well, they, they kind of need those they need those seats. Hmm. But, yeah. And then um, and the uh, conservatives have said, you know what? Uh, we're not we're not going to uh, form a coalition with uh, Guild Wilders. He can fuck off. And so so well, we yeah. have so so that means that we got you know the conservatives are the biggest one so they they get dips on creating coalition and they're like we're not going to form a coalition with the second largest party in 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 parliament so um uh i, I guess we're we're going to have to you know get a lot of parties involved so it might <laughs> become like a four party coalition that that's going to be fun <laughs> that's not going to work at all <laughs> There's there's been a few a few of those tried in, in England and Ireland and uh, I, I think it was two governments ago it didn't even last a year and and it completely collapsed and they had to vote in a new one. Mm -hmm. The in, government uh, just just closed. In defense of the Conservatives, though, they they did try to govern with the uh, with Mr. Wilders back in 2010, I believe, and it didn't end well. Because um, 
For one thing, Wilders uh, compromised on his election promises like 20 seconds after the elections. He was like, I'm gonna do this. And then he got votes. And after the election was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna do something completely different now because I'm, I'm in the government. Yeah, see, I wouldn't have any confidence of someone like that. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why he didn't win. Yes. If he has a history of being shit. That, that's the thing. And... Well, and the party I vote for doesn't have any history whatsoever. So I, I was like, yeah, <laughs> might as well. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I care anyway, because we all know that politics is one big scam. So, you know, might as well make it uh, make it fun. But but what if Trump wins? Well, if Trump wins, well, if, if he won in the Dutch elections, he, he would have to go in, you know, create a coalition. It, it wouldn't be like, well, um... You won. You get. You get. All, you get all. You are going to. Be, you, you, are, you get yeah, to be the emperor. You, you get to be emperor. It doesn't work like that over here. Like, if if Trump won the way he did over here, it's like, well, okay, you're you're the biggest uh, party, I guess. You're the I, biggest party, but, but ex, Hillary and the guy who doesn't know actually, who, yeah. what, what Aleppo is are now against you, and they are bigger. Actually, actually it wouldn't be the case because uh, the Dutch elections are based on popular vote, so. It would be Hillary that that would have you know gotten the largest. Um... And then, then 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 Trump would ally with the guy who doesn't know what Aleppo is, and he would rule anyway. Well, Trump would be like the the PVV in this case, so he'd, he'd be Mr. Wilders, and Hillary would like would be like fuck off. But you know, since in this uh, hypothetical situation, there would only be two parties that would be the case. The thing about the Dutch system, though, is that there's never been an election where um, one party has the majority. L they, they, there's always need uh, for a. Um... Uh, 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 clearly, you never had communism. <laughs> well, that I, 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 I would some, say for, for some reason in in socialist and I'm in communist countries, the communists always get a decisive majority. I don't know why. It just I, happens. But maybe mostly because they are the only party. On the election candidate list, mm -hmm. oh, maybe. Maybe it's like you guys vote for us. I mean, look, look at this. Look, look at the, the you know, at that, at that, that, the results. You guys overwhelmingly mm -hmm. voted for us. Yep, I mean, yep, sure, yep. we're the only. I mean, sure, we're the only party on the ballot. So I guess you can choose between people on the lists, but. You know, there's only one list, so it's still a vote. You know, you still get to vote. It's you, you just can't choose between parties. But who needs parties anyway? Parties are a tool of the of the patriarchy, capitalist um, everything. So yeah, yes, we, we we officially have new government, I guess, and it's to be seen. What what sort of coalition they'll form, but it's kind of going to suck. But you know what else is new? Yeah, the... Speaking of politics, there was uh, if so if or, no one. leader Merkel was in the White House today. Oh yeah, and she Trump was really wasn't. Him. Trump wasn't yeah. exactly excited. Yeah, Trump, not Trump wasn't even in the house. Yeah. Uh, Merkel asked, asked him to uh, for a handshake, and he was too nervous and didn't give her a handshake. Well, I, I, I don't I don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I but... can't imagine Trump seeing eye to eye with Merkel, honestly. On anything. Yeah, of course, uh, Trump made a comparison that uh, he and Merkel have something in common, both were. Uh, uh, Wiretapped by the by Obama by the Obama government. <laughs> <laughs> Top cat. And they both have blonde hair. Wait, Merkel's got blonde. Oh yeah, she kind of does. Yes. She's well, German. <laughs> well, it's more like dark. Race. It's more like I, I, dark I, I, blonde. I've seen a, a nice picture from a Turkish magazine that depicted her as a certain Adolf. I can't imagine. Why anyone would make such a picture? There's, there's nothing that that Merkel has done that I would consider uh, dictatorial at all. But, you know, other than everything I've heard her do. The big 
biggest thing she did was letting all those refugees in. Yeah, well, that's the one. She's gonna be remembered for, for uh, letting in uh, well, hundreds of thousands, if not even millions, of people into. The people are usually remembered for all the invasions they lead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah, not forget. Uh, that... Apparently, since we were talking about Turkey, Erdogan told, uh, like the European Turks, the Turks that live in Europe, that they should make at least uh, five, five children so that they can take over Europe. Well, Erdogan is saying all sorts of stuff that there's a war of the Crusaders versus Islam, and then there's that there's Turcophobia in mm -hmm. in Europe. Also, that he's going to let. 15,000 migrants a month to Europe just to punish Merkel or something like that. He's, he's, he's a very, very reasonable guy. Mm. He's, he's basically going full Macintosh. Yes, he, he, he also called everybody Nazi. Of and course. He basically acts like a typical Turk. <laughs> he's almost like yeah. a typical dictator. Huh? So he, he, he's calling everyone else dictators and then threatening to use an army of refugees to destabilize their countries. He's it, using it, his it, own it, people it, as a biological weapon. And it actually gets even better because he's using basically democratic tools to sue people that uh, apparently did some libel against him, like this one comedian in Obviously. Germany. Man oh, did, 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 did that... some uh, some Swiss comedian. But uh, at least the uh, Swiss Switzerland actually had some balls and said, nope, uh, those people are didn't commit a crime, so fuck off. Uh, did, that, did that mention then uh, after Netherlands did not like Turkey and vice versa? There was a gathering of Turkish people who were squeezing oranges. <laughs> <laughs> what? But uh, it's only or liable if it's a lie. Or, 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 orange happens mm -hmm. to be the national color, sort of, of, you know, Netherlands, because their it's, ruling it's family is, is from French ruling family of people, well, noble mm -hmm. family, from Orange. Yes. It's all, it's all very uh, confusing. And so, so they are, they were metaphorically squeezing the Netherlands, you know. Wow. Mm. It's too deep oh. six me. Of all their delicious juice. Me I meanwhile, did. meanwhile, sit here and not care. So, <laughs> if they're making such aggressive political statements, maybe you should make aggressive political statements back and just invade. The problem well, is that uh, you just get uh, get some balls and just uh, you know do like a travel warning for Turkey that it's not a country that you should do vacations in. There is one problem. Turkey is the second most powerful nation in NATO, as far as military goes. They are? Yeah. Really? That doesn't sound right at all. They basically, after the, the, after the USA, are supposed to have the largest army. Well, there's having the largest army, and there is, there's having the largest effective army. And I, I, I seriously doubt that Turkey has the standards to be, like that technologically advanced yeah uh, i mean not... let's not forget that freaking united kingdom is in nato and you know france and even the netherlands which might be small but we've got some very advanced weaponry also, uh, I mean, will, uh, everybody's in nato be... it's it's almost yeah. like un at this point yeah, also, they would need to get past Vienna, anyway. Mm -hmm, that too. So, oh, we, we are in, in NATO. After all, Poland is in NATO. Mm -hmm. you, Poland you, you can into space. Of all, <laughs> of all countries, Romania is in NATO. But Ukraine <laughs> isn't. Yeah, but it isn't, isn't that part of uh, NATO's general um, strategy of trying to expand towards the Russian border? And isn't that what kind of... Ex escalated the tensions between the east and the yeah. west. I mean, like, Russia. Where has in? in? I mean, I mean, Russia is basically um, bordering, no. bordering like this huge flat plain, and it's currently being populated by the the NATO's, and <laughs> and Russia's like, this this isn't good. Got this flat, flat 
piece of land that has no natural berries whatsoever and fucking NATO is staring us right in the face. It, this, this makes us feel very uneasy. And yeah, so it's it's kind of like, yeah, this, you need to do something. But then NATO's like, we've got to do something in return. And before we know it, World War Three. Ah, it's uh, Russia, Russia doesn't have to do anything. <clears throat> after, after all, it's it's not like we have weapons to defend with. It, it's almost like all this post Cold War animosity isn't actually helping dom diplomatic relations between our countries. It, maybe people just need to get over it. <gasps> it just just seems like a really bad idea for the largest countries in the world to continue to act like they despise each other well it's not about it's it, it's it's i i don't think it has to do with you know countries despising each other but geopolitics and resources and well do you think america is going to invade russia for the resources yes. No, but it is going to invade for the um well it's not going to invade but it is going to have tensions with russia over or well, for instance syria because Russia is essentially saying, okay, we want to do this thing here. And America's like, we want to do the exact opposite. And then both countries are like, well, um, our interests do not exactly line here. We have a problem. They don't want to do this thing, Dad. They just want to help those innocent uh, governments slash natives. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so, yeah, we, we got two two countries with conflicting interests and that that's what causes the conflict not oh my god you're a different country than ours so we hate you it's more like well your interests conflict with ours and therefore you are a problem yeah but the reason they get public support for these actions is because there's there's an ongoing like anti-russian thing in america that's been happening since the cold war mm -hmm. where they, they they just it's just fear mongering and most of it isn't based on reality at all anymore it's like those evil communist russians going to come and eat your children yeah. those evil communists hey let's make a society based on class of course so much better yeah we, we hate the fucking russia so we're going to have like fucking identity politics and whatnot and that's not going to backfire whatsoever no sir it does yeah both boat systems seem to be pretty bad right now mm -hmm. although the, the the capitalist system still seems to work a little bit better than communism a yeah, boat? Consider oh yeah Considering that that Venezuela is doing really well right now, like I I, I think I'll, I'm considering going going to Venezuela and live there because they have bread wars. If you thought yes. that line, they are arresting bakers who don't <laughs> take enough bread. <laughs> Such a successful uh, economic system. Like imagine you're a baker and and you come into work and then. You have orders to to use ninety percent of your flour exactly to make bread. I'm like fuck this, I'm going to bake a croissant. And then in the afternoon you get arrested. Yep, for misallocating resources, I guess. Yes, I, and then you're like, but but I need to bake croissants. They are selling pretty well. But so you, you but so, but so you use a a flour that's a week old because you know you are not allowed to use the fresh flour. Then you get arrested. But but dude, that's that's state communism. It's not true communism. They just didn't try hard enough. It, it, yeah. Obviously, they, they got it all wrong, and we are going to to get it. But communism on a national or larger scale does not work. At most, it works on a local community scale. We just like we just dude we did just dude we just didn't try hard enough. We, we just need to try harder. It's going to work this time. Can you grab the sun <laughs> if you try hard enough? Yes. And then you die. The, those, are de those, those are details. Claw. I'll, I'll get one of those spaceships from Outlaw Star with a grappler on it, but big enough to pick up a sun. Well, someone's spamming a chat with, with the messages. Oh. Right it's in. you. I'm actually sleepwalking right now. Okay. Am I dead? 
Yes. Are you what? Uh, am I dead? Uh, no, you are sleepwalking. You can you can sleep when you're dead. Okay. Well, I guess I'm sleepwalking while I draw. That that yes. That, that makes sense. You can do that. It makes me feel very special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, by the way, in case you didn't notice yet, I'm drawing Tracer on the Overwatches. Because... Uh, I didn't. And that, that's Why do you enjoy that terrible video game so much? Exactly. Why? It's almost as if I'm having fun. But it's terrible. Doesn't matter. I'm having fun. But it's terrible and boring. Look, look. look. Isn't the thing we're railing against with, you know, the gaming gate things that we as consumer get to enjoy the games that we enjoy without someone telling us what and what to enjoy and what not to enjoy? No, Artix, you should you should stop using fun as the ultimate criteria. <laughs> no, no, Artix, you're missing understanding. What 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 gamer gators want is people not to censor our video game because they don't appreciate. Not that I can't tell you that your video game choice is is bad. Because your video game choice is bad. Yeah, your waifu is shit, wait. <laughs> exactly. His well, waifus are shit. Well, I just don't give a shit. Well, you should. My opinion is the most important opinion. Yeah. Okay, well, that, that, that's very that's very cute of you. Here, have a, ma have, have a, have a throw trophy. I'll, I'll draw it right now. It... We all know that my opinion is the only one that matters. Okay, I, I, I just drew you a... a trophy it, it's a very um beautiful trophy it's very it better not be a playstation trophy if it's a playstation trophy i'll have to kill you <laughs> no no it's no an I... it's an xbox trophy no, no. <gasps> I, I assure you it's it's a very shiny trophy that's got like all the frills and shit on it it better on the show summit it, i'm worth even, the, i'm worth it, all the trophy it, it's even got like a few sparkles in there so, so yeah, how does it make you feel? Uh, a few twilights in there. Pretty good, pretty good. I, I, I always knew I was deserving of all the trophy. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Well, too bad. I'm going to delete it. It, it, it it's gone. Aha, uh -huh. joke's you, on you. I you, screenshotted it 12 times. Well, dun, dun, dun. well, given that the trophy wasn't very good to begin to begin with, um, well... Have fun with it, I guess. The, the quality of the trophy doesn't matter. It's the thought and my possession of it that counts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean but, that's why people do achievements. But what if I told you that I it I embedded a virus? All the better. It makes it unique <laughs> and and dangerous. And, and it still doesn't make a difference from achievements. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to delete all your data. I bought myself new pencils and I just fucking broke it again. How the fuck do you manage to do that? It's because they're graphite pencils. I mean, yes. solid graphite. They snap really easy. That, that, I, it's, not, it's not a pencil. That's it's right. A of graphite. I was just drawing with it when we started, and then I went and put it down, and I dropped it. And when it hit the four, it broke in half. Uh, have you tried not dropping it? I That would be the idea. Not dropping is, 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 is too mainstream, and it's probably patriarchal. Uh, yes. Also, that's another thing I noticed about my fuck. I mean, okay, I was going to mention Twitter, so that's already saying a lot. <laughs> but so many fucking people on Twitter going like, "Oh my god, I'm so glad that hate didn't win." You're welcome. <laughs> the, the, the hate didn't win. We 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 are such virtuous people. I don't think they really understand the concepts of hate not winning because they are the ones hating on the people that they're rave raving as winning. It's like, oh my god, these Nazis that we hate didn't win. It's like, wait. Mm -hmm. you, you should probably think about that for a second. Yeah, that, 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 they'd probably be the kind of people that would be going on the street protesting if, if their worst fears were actually to come true. But they didn't. And with a good reason, because it was not going to happen in the first place. Like, this scenario of, oh my god, Geared Will is going to, to take over and destroy everything. It, it wasn't going to happen. We've been mindlessly hating this person for his political ideology, and he lost. Which means hate didn't win. And he didn't Absolutely. even lose. He gained seats. <laughs> he came where? He gained, 
No, it, oh, he's the second. Yeah, he's the sixth party. I don't exactly call that losing. <laughs> he lost a bit. The hate didn't win a bit. <laughs> hate won a little amount. The, the, they got less seats than we feared he would. I guess that's a victory. <laughs> Uh, to be, Flawless to, victory. To, to be honest, uh, to, the victory by Geert wouldn't really do much anyway. <laughs> I mean, this this part is honestly not not very good. Uh, if he were, if he won, then you you would be recording this episode from a barbershop. Well, well why would I be uh, recording from a barbershop? Oh, because, because he, it he, would be you would uh, mandate a forced visit. What? Well, the, okay, okay, you see, uh, Viserys' joke is that since Geert Wilders has a very odd hairdo, he will force everyone to have essentially the same hairdo as he does. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Like a good dictator he'd be, right? Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. But, every, every, but... Everybody needs to wear the state-approved hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I don't approve of the state-approved hair... Uh, ben boy, can 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 I be can I be a refugee for once? Then then I'll ref then I'll refugee to the islands. Uh, I I don't know. I'm hoping our government won't allow you. Oh, but why? Because refugees are terrifying. But I'll be a good refugee. I'll. How do I know you're not Islamic in disguise? Uh, because I eat bacon all the fucking time. But you could be doing that just to keep up your ruse. No, uh, no. No, if if if, if if our resident um, Muslim girl person is anything to go by, then you know pork is absolutely a rum, and you should never ever willingly eat it, unless well, it's the only thing left to eat, and you're starving, and if you don't eat, you you'll you'll but die. But even in that case, you you you'd rather resort to cannibalism. Anyway, Arctic Ireland might be a refugee state, but it's not a refugee state in the same sense as Murica is, you know? Murica is a refugee state or state of immigrants in the sense that there's a lot of immigrants in the place that immigrated there to start a new life. Ireland is a immigrant state in that sense that, that, that very lot of people who immigrated from there. <laughs> Although in recent years, it's been filling up with uh, uh, <clears throat> other European nationals who want to take advantage of our liberal health uh, welfare systems which you did i'm currently doing right now yes because i have no job <laughs> but i'm not an immigrant i was naturally born here so i'm allowed to yeah and also you you actually did some work so you also kind of paid into it i guess yes i have worked and i'm looking for more work mm -hmm. if anyone out there on the internet wants to give me a job you can contact me on here <laughs> yeah go to here and uh give fanboy a job uh, the yeah. photo on your phones now and then you'll be rich. now yeah uh, i know how to computer hmm? it doesn't if you, if you would like more information on how much i know how to computer contact us here actually this on is a thing i i've been meaning uh, if you I've... want more information on how Penboy is good with computer, contact him through computer. There's actually something that I think we should do more often on Radio Rothingham, where, where we just do like a retarded role play. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> Atrix, I think I told you this when we had a, an episode 15 or something like that. I'm mm -hmm. not pretty sure. No, episode 10 actually. Wow, that's, you, that's you, at, you... at least wait, two less wait, 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 did you actually memorize it down to the exact <coughs> episode? Uh, I, I think it was a number that was divisible by 5. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Not sure if it was 10 or 15, but it was definitely less than 20 and divisible by 5. Good, good job. That, that's quite a specific way to remember something so utterly random. Uh, but yes. we, we got a caller. We got, we got a caller. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put her through because I, I think she might actually have a job for you, Ben Boy. Oh, no. So, so let's put her on. Oh, please don't do this. Cheers, love. The Calvary's here. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I'm not playing along with this. This okay. isn't my thing. <laughs> but my That's computer... not his fetish. <laughs> but my computer's broke. It needs fixing. How to? 
Well, like, like whenever I use my chron chrono um, accelerator thing, it, it, it crashes and reboots. So I go back in time. And... Yes, you, you, you need to go back in time before it broke. Oh, so okay. I'll, I'll do it right now. Okay, that, that ends, ends the whole spiel because he literally goes back in time which before this recording happened. Exactly. So We yeah. are free! Yay! Good job. Well, that went nowhere. I guess we need another topic. And I think I know just the thing. Because back... Me too. Oh. Well, um, I was going to do coin toss, but I don't have a... Oh, I actually do have coins over here. So. Header... Toss a beer can. Head or tails? You can toss a beer can. It doesn't, doesn't really... Uh, head or tails? Yeah. I would like knuckles. <coughs> Metals. Uh, I'll consider it head. And so... Oh, back knuckles! At... You know, the, oh, the knuckles. red one. Okay, so that's that's uh, head. Uh, so back at tails. So uh, I'll just toss it in here, and we got um, tails. So that that would be back. That's racist. Yeah. So back back to your topic first. What what do you, what was it that you want to bring up? You brought it up. Okay. So Zell. Okay, okay, okay. So apparently the the Nintendo Switch, you know, that, that wonderful new console that's super powerful, like it's more powerful than Super Saiyan and PlayStation 6 combined. And um, apparently it's selling very well. It's It, it already crossed the 1.5 million sales mark, which is the best selling console that Nintendo ever had, apparently. Yeah. I guess it's cheap. Yeah. Except it isn't! On, uh, it's 300! Yeah, but, to continue on, but to continue on this, actually, they actually are going to double the uh, production of the uh, Switch. And they are forecasting, instead of 8 million Switches sold, they are forecasting 16 million Switches sold. But 16 why? within what kind of... 16 million in what kind of time yeah. period? Because so but far... Though, this it's year, new. Oh. This fiscal year. That's a lot Basically of switches. Fiscal year, I think it's fiscal, fiscal year, year 2017. Yeah, Q to what 2017? 2018. Yeah, the fiscal year ends in quarter one 2018. So that's uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. But the only game that's on it right now that's selling at yeah, all right is, is Breath of the Wild, right. which is and... apparently the best-selling Ninty game ever. But oh, that's yeah. on... It's on the Wii U as well, and it runs better. <laughs> also, no. they had the new Let's Dance, which apparently won Best Game Award on the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards. Yeah, that dumb. implies that it, that we that, that implies that it, that matters. It's it's fucking Nickelodeon game, yeah. whatever it is. I don't care. But, but yeah, I mean, we are going to get some games, the games announced, and pretty much there's speculation that there's also a, a part of Smash Brothers comics, and there's also a Pokemon game co coming, like a mainline Pokemon game. That's, so basically, that's nice. this kind of confirms all this speculation. Because but, but are they on the Switch right now? Nope. Hmm? Are but they on the Switch? some folder for a tree. So, so none of these games are out on release. That, that, it had that's two, my... two games on release, Breath of the Wild and Barman. That's I my big, just can't the game. That's my big gripe. Well, to be okay, my gripe with the uh, Switch launch so far is that yes, it's it's got virtually no games on it right now, except for Zelda, and that's it. It like, is absolutely absurd how much rope people are giving Nintendo to hang themselves with right now. They're just like spooling them all the rope. It's like, hey, Nintendo, oh, you look, you released a new console. Oh, it's great. We're, wait, we've all bought it, but um, but I'm noticing a problem here. Um, Where are the games? Yeah, but the issue that you are kind of playing through here is that you are implying that there are no games coming. I mean, yes, I get No, it, no, 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 right no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm implying that no games were on release. That's the only thing I'm implying. But every other console has more fucking console. No? no, it's not. It's not at all back. Have no you seen console. The PS3 launch? Yes, it had more games than the Switch, and its launch was terrible. So was the Xbox. So yeah, uh, now we have Binding of Isaac. Next month is gonna get uh, Mario Kart 8 again. Mm -hmm. So so uh, but it's, uh, a little but it's indie game. Moment for the people who didn't uh, buy our view in the first place because there was a. Uh, 
a big amount of people who had a 3DS but didn't have a Wii U. Basically, just yeah. switch is directed at them. Yeah, my the, my the, big the 3DS was good. My my big gripe with uh, with the uh, Switch launch is that when they first announced the Switch, I was under the impression that it, they were really going to go all out. Like that, this Switch would be of this this launch would be a launch where they would release a console. It would have like big first party titles right out of the gate. Like it launches, it got fucking more. I mean, why isn't Mario Kart out? Why isn't Mario Kart Deluxe out? Right after the launch, they, they... Well, to be, it, well, let's be honest here, and I'm also uh, think the biggest reason is because they said they're gonna release it this fiscal year because it's still March and not April yet, and so they kind of had to rush it because I have the impression because you know there is no browser yet, there is no Netflix application yet, that basically you know it's very bare bones just that it can play games, and I'm gonna openly admit it. But they know exactly that the crowd that is gonna buy it at launch are the gamers who just want to play the games and the, all the features like the internet browser and everything. But there aren't gonna... any games. Everyone yeah. is too busy playing yeah. Breath of the Wild. Exactly. That seems to be enough at the moment. Well, the people who are being at least are not gamers, they are fans. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. But yeah, so it, it's just it's just marketing like a rampant fanboyism, just like Apple do. And I think Apple is the worst company on the planet. I so think now the, Nintendo... main difference, the main difference here would be that gamers would be like, I'm not buying this thing just to play a, a shitty graphical Skyrim. <laughs> and then they wouldn't actually, buy. It. But they are actually fans. I was, actually it was like, oh my god, this Skyrim looks better than here. Ocarina of Time. I'm going to buy this. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I was playing Skyrim recently, and it was like, even with all the texture packs, it kind of still looked awful. Okay, yeah, but, like, but uh, it does. Like the first it thing that I was Skyrim. trying to do was to cast a fire spell on a tree, and nothing happened really? in Skyrim. Okay, but I think Beck had actually had some criticisms about Breath yeah. of the Wild that he wanted to bring yeah. up. It, it is so I mean, yes, of course, it is. Uh, Good game, and I think they're most likely are gonna patch some things because nowadays, you know, even Nintendo patches games sometimes. <laughs> because uh, my biggest uh, gripe with the game is basically, yes, it's awesome, you can do a lot, but like the combat system is is fucking dreadful because uh, the weapons break so fast. Wait, your weapons break? Yep. Yes. Yeah, it's like Five Guy too. So you, just, you grab a weapon, use it a few times, and then it just breaks. And you have to. Exactly. That is basically how they make you scavenge for more resources. Mm. Oh god, and it's got like DLC, doesn't it? Uh, it's yeah, got, like, I think. Micro payments where you can buy no, no. Bo treasure boxes or something. No, 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 no it doesn't. It has that doesn't. Amiibos. and yes, amiibos can give you treasure boxes with extra items. Wait, it does? I mean, I I thought that the game didn't have any sort of. Um, Pay to win elements to it, like it the DLC doesn't. was. No, it's not exactly pay to win because the stuff you get from the amiibos is just the it's same better than any of the stuff you can get in game. It's most likely it's like just beginner stuff from what I have seen. So basically, if you are lazy, lazy shit, you can just use the amiibo to get a few weapons that you ever realize after a few mobs that break anyway, and you would have found them anyway by playing the game, just like. Basically, the best thing the amiibos can give you is a horse. Oh, okay. <laughs> so because what you're saying is that, right. yes, it does indeed have payments that reward you with shit, but they're not micro payments. They're quite expensive, actually, and they're barely worth the payout. Micro so payments. It's yeah. even even worse than what I was thinking. Well, the thing about... Uh, it, it's kind of like the Ubisoft thing, except in the Ubisoft thing you could buy the max upgraded weapons from the start. Yeah, the, the, thing, the thing about uh, this whole Amiibo thing is that they're just they're, they're just nice little trinkets to have and it, it's not really about the content they unlock. I mean, the, the content that they do unlock typically doesn't really warrant getting an Amiibo. Yeah, in my opinion. Much. It's just like, oh, if you have this amiibo, you can also use this, I guess. Oh, so wait. That... There is something better than the horse. And it was actually announced way back when Breath of the Wild was announced. When you use the Twilight Princess 
uh, Wolflink amiibo, you get Wolflink as a sidekick to your regular Link. And that I think it's like the only way. <laughs> <to> <laughs> link. Like Wolflink so, yeah, follows yeah. you around through the games and help through the game and helps you in fights. Uh -huh. So the only way to get that special ability is to be by buying a fifteen-year-old doll. An ugly fifteen-year-old doll. Ugly for you. Sounds great. Fifteen years? It's so long. But it's still like optional. Yeah, that's the important part. As long as it's yeah, optional like and it's not being. Optional is just you know show show hunt in so that people. <laughs> You know that the figurines can, can you you can't kind of... you can't get all the content in the game you bought without buying something external. That that's not optional. Plus, I will say that if you are a particularly hardcore gamer, like super badass, you can beat the game right after you started it, like with minimum resources. If you are very extremely skilled, of course. Mm -hmm. Like, you can directly go to the final boss right after the start. So you should be careful. Uh, yes. It's kind of, they had uh, also speed running in mind with the game, but it, of course, as he said, you need to be like kind of very, very hardcore, have no life and everything. <laughs> Otherwise, you will need a shit ton of resources to even survive the battle. Yeah, you, you, but you, but yes. If you are extremely good, you can do it right at the start. With so it's open world, time. so... Because of that, they left out all the parts where you had to gather items and, and stuff to, to progress. Yeah. Well, you must, you must and gather also, items. Uh, and also no, but you know what happens with open world places? They, they leave out the story. <laughs> and <laughs> of course, if you want, you do have to collect artifacts if you want to get the Master Sword. And the Master Sword is the only weapon in the game that never breaks. The Mustard Sword? Uh, let's not talk about this yet because this is spoiler material. So okay. A master, this is spoiler. Well, he's already said it. No, no, I mean. I, I mean, most players master. already know about it at this at the moment. I not really that find the game because I was too busy fucking around the open world. You you understand, Sekla, that that spoilers aren't about what most people know and it's about what the people who haven't enjoyed it yet don't know okay so i won't tell you what you have to do to get it jesus christ are you a moron you yes play the game okay that, no that i is... forgot my train of but yeah, the thing about the amiibos is, yes, we're complaining that you need stupid figurines on the content, but the difference is kind of, it's like mostly the minor content, like random weapons, with the exception of this Wolfling thing. And, uh, every that's the thing. And, if basically, and basically every amiibo can be used with multiple games. That is true. So basically, okay, but... yes, you buy one and you want basically every Nintendo game uh, features some little thing, like for example... Are you like using Mark. the full references, Amiibos? That's sexist. Uh, uh, and basically in Mario Kart uh, 8, you could get like some random costumes for your Amiibos, uh, for your Miis when you use Amiibo. So your uh, Mii was dressed like the Amiibo that, that you scanned in. Right, uh, but that 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 does set a disturbing precedent to me. Like they they can easily patch in more shit to the game, uh, extra DLC things and whatnot, and add more amiibo features, and put a lot more stuff behind a physical paywall, which to me is just shitty business practice. Well, I mean, on the other hand, yeah. they uh, they had the chance to really milk that cow, and so far they really haven't because they did figure that that not everyone's exactly psyched for for amiibo stuff. Uh, and usually, it's not. I mean, it these days it seems to be treated more like an afterthought than uh, a core business uh, practice, like it was like f five years ago. I don't remember them saying that Amiibos would, would unlock things like that in previous games, honestly. But no, nope. well, right from the start they were like, yeah, Amiibo will unlock content in games. Yeah, the we need to get were... you to buy them somehow. 
Mm. Yeah, but it's just like minor content. So basically, it's all content that you can perfectly play the game without because the game is balanced. You let, know, without the amiibos. Let, let me just thing. let me just put it like this. I never really felt like I was missing out on content because I didn't have the proper amiibo. It was always like really fucking minor shit that I can easily do without. Well, in, in this instance, instance of Breath of the Wild, I, I I definitely feel like I was being dicked over not being able to get Wolf Link if I didn't buy the Amiibo. Because cause that, that's just... I know. kind of think it's more of an easy mode or something, because, you know, it's almost like you're helping a lot. Well, yeah, it's pay to win. Yeah, but the and, and the people, the the people who have paid have that advantage. The thing is basically back when they released the uh, uh, Wolfling Amiibo because it's like older than the actual than Breath of the Wild, they promise oh it's gonna do something in Breath of the Wild, so they kinda had to implement something. It's going to exist. Yeah. But uh, but still there is actual DLC for Zelda Breath of the Wild and they rightfully got some backlash for announcing it before the game was actually out. Yeah, that wasn't exactly the smartest thing they did. Yeah. No, I don't I don't care about that. If if you're if you're saying you're planning an expansion pack, what's the big deal? It's like as long as it's actually content. Yeah. I mean pay, as long paying as it's not the DLC. Paying like oh. five quid for a few extra dungeons, that's that's fine. That's, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, usually Nintendo DLCs are actually like worth, worth the money. Like the Mario Kart 8 DLC was basically, I think, the best DLC I have ever seen in, in a game. Because basically for 12, uh, 12 quid you got like m uh, more than the half of the game again. Like on top, basically, the game itself, the base game had uh, uh, 32 courses, tracks, and then with the DLCs for 12 euro, you got another 16 on top of it. Yeah, this, this is true. The, um, the, the, characters. The, the core game was already on par with uh, all the Mark card games oh, that came before it, or even more actually, than that. Actually, even better because like the previous games, the retro courses were like basically just copy-pasted from the original game. Maybe just high-res textures and like Mario Kart 8 went like like full hill completely redone courses to partially even adjusted for the new stuff yes like completely like more like re 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 uh, re they, they basically re we made the tracks to fit in the mechanics of marker day so they weren't ba they were based on the original tracks but they they were they were improved so basically it's like fifa no, no. Because FIFA's like, okay, let's see, uh, roster dot um, um, doc or whatever format they use, and we just change the names a bit and uh, render it, compile the game again. Okay, this is now um, got uh, this is open now the edit. Got it. Simulator 2017. Got, we're it's now just gonna uh, open the the uh, text editor. This is now FIFA 2018. There we go. It, it's oh, funny, people I, give I, FIFA I, I, a lot I, I, of shit, but they do actually put in considerable effort to customizing the very popular characters. Like, they will often go out and motion capture the players specifically, and those animations will actually be unique up for that player sprite in the game, mm -hmm. which, which is kind of a crazy level of effort for something that nobody's ever even going to notice. Yeah, considering that There's the kinds of... Well, I, I tricks yes. are at some reviews, and apparently, Farming Simulator 2017 is much better than Farming Simulator 2015. I should, I should tell, I should note my brother because he plays and the shit out of that it game. It has, it has incredible amount of detail on those tractors. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I cannot believe that there are people who actually seriously play this, and it boggles my mind there are people who actually model this and code this. <laughs> Oh well, the, the modeling. I think, I think modeling is like the less of an issue because, because often like if you are very nice and kind of you know successful, you can actually get the original CAD data from the manufacturer, which uh, yeah. happens uh, in big parts with some of the car simulating uh, games like Gran Turismo and Drive Club. Because keep, they keep in mind a lot of the tree, uh, a lot of the CAD data from from the uh, uh, you know car manufacturers. 
That's they true. Are making, they are making tractors in CAD now. I'm never going to be in a tractor again. But but that that is that is true, back. But um, those model files, the CAD files, are not suitable for gaming. So they they do need to be entirely retopologized and and turned into polygons. I know, I know. But it it's a base at least that you can work with because you see how this looks like this, and a good modeler, of course, can readjust it. But it's way easier, to, you know, to work with actual. 3D data that is actually accurate, and you can see, ah, uh, I can, can take this and make my model based on this instead, you know. Oh, no, I, I don't disagree. Know. It's easy. That, it's, it, that's a very good workflow to have, but it's it's still a lot of effort. Yeah, of course, it's a lot of effort, but it's making things easier. But also, an interesting thing was like with Drive Club, when they actually were recording out audio for some cars because they wanted to, you know, have also accurate audio. I think it was Audi. They like had six microphones around the car and were uh, recording different engine sounds and everything and it was so high quality and it was even high quality and as higher quality than the stuff than than audi had then audi actually asked them if they can have the audio files from them too that doesn't really surprise me con <laughs> con con considering audi aren't exactly a uh, a, a sound production company mm -hmm. But the marketing department might be. I don't know. Yeah, of course. You know, you need sounds of your car. If you have uh, advertisement, sometimes you kind of need some sounds of your car. But I, but I have to consider that, 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 you know, Farming Simulator is most likely a product of Germany. So, yeah, they, <laughs> well, take, yes, their, their, they take their simulators extremely seriously. As demonstrated by Beck right here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was, that was kind of a cheap, cheap jab, but yeah, Germany is known but for is their cheap. large numbers of simulator games. Immigrants. That too. I mean, uh, there's pro I, I would be legit surprised if there's not going to be a uh, refugee simulator anytime soon. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there is one, it's just nothing official from the game, those the game developers because they would get into trouble for doing that. Why? Isn't that the official policy of the German government? Wouldn't they get like special status by uh, their leader Merkel? He's like, this game dev is now officially the people's uh, game dev and no one can criticize not, them because... Really because... Apparently it can't it have weapons so be because... And secondly, no one would really want uh, to play yeah. it the way that they would Back, have you're, you're taking a bait. You're taking a bait. This is a bait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of missing Trigen in this call because I, 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 had a, I had a question on him. Because I want to do what are you supposed to do when your government is taking your guns? You shoot them. You, you just hmm. don't. You just don't give them your guns. That's an idea. Because even the EU is trying to take our guns again. Well, yes. Isn't that what they time. always do? Is it? Is it? Isn't that like their pastime? Like it's it's well, a Saturday this, this, afternoon. This time, yeah. this time they are getting getting into it more. Now you can't even own stuff that has more than twenty rounds in the magazine, and you can't own semi-automatic weapons. And here's and, the thing. And our our, our politician was responsible for countering that. Which he failed with, of course, because there's more people in EU than there's of him. He's mm -hmm. like, well, the thing is, most of the terrorist acts are made by non-legal weapons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is true, uh, and and you have to notice there's a particular trend here. Let's see, uh, and and how these two events might be connected. Think about it for a second. So the EU are trying to make an EU army, right? And mm -hmm. at the same time trying to ensure all citizens of the EU are unarmed. Do, 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 do you see a connection there? Do, do you oh. see how that could go oh, poorly oh, for anyone? OMG, you're such a conspiracy theory, th conspiracy theory, the, 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 blah, 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 don't take you seriously, S stupid conspiracies, do you, do you... no one listened to him. Like so, so, sorry, I was just emulating the average reaction to that sort of thing. 
I am a conspiracy terrorist, it's true, but mm. what if it was true? <laughs> what if it and, was true? Like, what if the America or if the European government was trying to make an army while at the same time trying to remove everyone's guns and remove their ability to defend themselves? I mean, those two events couldn't possibly be connected, right? Well, here, here's the thing about the, the EU. Um, I, I do know that this Verhofstadt guy that's currently doing the negotiations for the EU has got like a huge boner for the EU. Did, did you ever see any of his interviews regarding the EU and why it's so great? Uh, he's, he's like... No. He's like, oh my god, the EU is so fantastic and nationalism is really bad. And if we don't, you know, stomp out nationalism, we're going to have wars again. Um, um, how is his belief that the EU is great, not a form of nationalism? That's my point exactly. It, by, by essentially telling us, okay... Nationalism is really fucking bad. And I see this all over the place. Like there's whole swaths of people that... I mean, okay, to, to make sure I'm not not a nationalist in the sense of, oh my god, Netherlands is the best thing in the entire goddamn universe because it's not. But it's more like, okay, I just want to be able to make my own goddamn laws. I want to hold my own politicians accountable for the actions and not some bureaucrat in Brussels. That That's reasonable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No, no, really, it's not. Uh, I guess I'm a Nazi, but I digress. Um, so yeah, by by essentially telling us the EU citizens that no, you, you can't, you know, have any sort of pride for your in, for your nations, and we should all do it on a European level, and Europe strong and nationalism bad. Yes, he is ironically promoting European nationalism. <laughs> is is. Yeah. It's like Just his his type of nationalism is better than ours. Exactly. It's like, yeah, just look at the Chinas and the America and everything. They they are so much bigger, so we need to work together as Europe. And I'm like, well, I we do can... agree that we should work together, but not at the expense of common sense. Well, you don't need a European super state to do that. Exactly. I mean, I That's mean. What? It's what being allied with other countries is called is, is all about. Um, it's like, hey, hey, country we're allied with, this other country is threatening us, and they are saying that they're going to nuke all our our boats. And then the other country says, well, if they nuke all your boats, then you won't be able to deliver us your fine China tea. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, that would be bad for us too. And, and then everyone's like, do you know what? Let's let's not let them nuke our boats. Let's instead go to their country and nuke all their nukes. <laughs> With nukes. Of course. Look, I can only understand solving po deals, political <laughs> problems with nuclear weapons, okay? <laughs> In fact, my idea of a, of a di diplomatic negotiation is everyone gets around a table, and then someone presses a button, and the table is relieved to be a nuclear device, and then... It starts counting down for two hours, and if they have not solved their diplomatic issue by the time the counter reaches zero, uh, them and the entire city they're in is destroyed. Okay, why, why, okay. why, why, why are you jobless, and why don't you have a job in in the, in, in diplomacy? You should should have right. Pe people don't seem to think my 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 methods are sound or mm. sane. Oh yeah, they'll probably say something like, "Oh, it's dangerous, and uh, it's going to just cause the end of human civilization as we know it." Uh. Uh, nuking everyone will also yield the result. Everyone's very much more peaceful when they've been reduced to radioactive vapor. Uh, I know, right? People are, you know, they only look at the short term. They're like, if there's going to be nuclear war, I'll die. And like, but look at the long term. Yeah, think about all the roaches that are going to try. Exactly. And then we build civilization, and then we'll have our glorious, um, super super <laughs> intelligent <laughs> nuclear cockroaches. <laughs> Long live the three green. And they'll the, dig and the they'll empire. and they'll dig up some hard drive and they'll find a recording radio Rothingham and listen back to this, and they're like, they knew. 
Holy shit. Holy shit. Just, 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 just you walk, mate. <laughs> you walk, Roach, mate. Yeah, on second thought, a dynamite bomb in the table of the boardroom would probably... No, work. no, 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 that won't work, and I'll explain just I'm why. I'm denying the glorious Roach Empire from its destiny. Well, th that, that doesn't have to do anything with that. Oh my god, someone joined it. This... Hey, Trigen! Hey. Uh, Trigen, what, what are you going to... What, what are you to do when the government is taking your guns? I was going to say that if some future civilization came back and dug up a copy of Raider Rockingham, they would probably put it back where they found it and forget that they ever <laughs> were digging in the first place. It was like, there's nothing worth digging up from this ancient civilization. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Not even yeah, and also, as also, it's the only thing they know about our civilization. So th this, is, this is their only... Oh, well, I, 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 I imagine that in, in the far future there's going to be a very severe shortage of Pepes mm -hmm. because there'll be only a few unearthed. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah, that, 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 there will be no physical recordings of the internet, so most of the Pepes will be destroyed. Only the physical ones would remain. So yeah, there's going to be a black. So there's going to be a black market of Pepes. Yes. And so there's like this this art auction thingy, and this 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 auctioneer comes along. It's like, let's see, this is a particularly good Pepe. It was probably <laughs> drawn in the uh, early um, human age of the uh, what we call the two thousands. It was used. Uh, it was created using a very crude application that they had back then, an agent tool known as. Uh, <clears throat> MS Paint. Oh, and uh, I can tell uh, by the uh, pixels, uh, and having uh, seen uh, quite uh, a few uh, Pepe's. There will be in no it. physical access of the internet, therefore you cannot have a Pepe. No, 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 no. They can see on the, the print or whatever it is that. that well, that's better. Yeah, it's, it's a printed image it's, of it's, Pepe. It's, it's a sheet of paper that survived 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. It's a dumbest, worst, best idea. <laughs> I'm going to go to a, a jeweler's and have them. Uh, forge me the rarest gold pepe. <laughs> I've actually read a um, old sanct a classic science fiction that reminds me of that. It's uh, from the perspective of uh, Venusians who find themselves on Earth, uh, which is a desolate wasteland, and they've recovered a single artifact from the previous Earth civilization, and they they uh, with great care like extract it and bring it back and figure out like how to open up the old recordings and um, only to be presented with a uh, Mickey Mouse cartoon, um, leading them to believe that the Earth civilization was full of strange um, uh, moving structures and oddly shaped, <laughs> ugly, horrifying creatures. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where Fort Freepack visits Earth for the first time and he makes the assumption that due to the due to the population level that uh, automobiles are the leading form of life on the planet Earth. Yes. And therefore Ford Prefect is a perfectly ordinary name. <laughs> mm hmm Similar to this. on that was oh. the announcement of sorry, that NASA was going to um said that uh doing the math they figured out how effective a gravity telescope would be using the sun mm -hmm. and they said that they could look at it, some of our nearest exoplanets using the solar gravity focal point which is like way too far out from like beyond the orbit of pluto for to be usable mm -hmm. in using modern technology but they could like see um objects the size of central park on uh, on exoplanets using that That'd so like cool. Just imagining, That's, like, there could be some advanced civilization looking at us right now. At our center yeah, park, presumably. So some some faraway civilization is looking at this podcast and they're like, what the fuck are these guys on about? <laughs> yes. They're, 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 they're like, they have, cent they have central park on their planet as the size of our objects. <laughs> also, also, since you guys are listening... I'm going to reveal you guys a secret, you, 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 you far away civilization. Listen up, listen up, because this is important. Because one Mention of our... Mention secret. Because the mystical one, wisdom the, of the year 2017. Yes, yeah. So, so 
one of our our, our citizens, one of the, the this planet's inhabitants is running for Congress, right? And she you have to explain what a Congress is. Oh, it's some political union. Then, then again, I need to explain what political union. Just look that shit up. You guys probably have access to Wikipedia. You you can listen to this. You can list. You can yeah, open up the Wikipedia. Stone, stone tablet versions of Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway. So one of us, as in one of the inhabitants of this planet, wants to colonize the moon, <laughs> and the reason he wants to do that is because. If you, you you take a moon rock and you chuck it back at Earth, the explosion will be bigger than a th- thousand <laughs> nuclear explosions. I am not making this up. This is what literally Who 3 actually believes, apparently. Yes, I, I read that Brianna Wu taught moon colonies would in fact lead to the destruction of civilization because people on the moon toss rocks at Earth. Someone is uh, reading. Uh, someone's been reading. The moon is a harsh mistress, <laughs> um, and there is some truth to it. Toss is is a little bit egregious. Um, well, uh, I know. To... Uh, not NASA or the Department of Defense in America did propose a, which simply consisted of dropping uh, poles the side of telephone poles made out of pure tungsten from space. Yes, so the thing, the idea is that you can uh, store kinetic energy in orbit. Um, yes, but, so but also you put something it's... into orbit and then deorbit it, you, you, you can use a fraction of that rocket energy in an instant to obliterate something on the ground. Yeah, but the, the item you're deorbiting has to be hard and strong enough to actually survive re-entry. Like tungsten. Yes. Exactly, like a giant tungsten <laughs> pole, not a moon rock that you could pick up and toss. No, um, yeah. So it'd have to be something designed to get through uh, to to survive reentry, or just be massive enough to do it. Yeah. But well, uh, um, in uh, the moon is a harsh mistress. A uh, moon colony revolts by uh, instead of sending back green shipments to Earth, they start hurling. Uh, metal canisters filled with concrete back at earth using their uh mm. um using their giant railgun system that they have on the planet on okay. the uh on the moon question why would they be mar- why would they be farming grain on the moon to launch it back to earth that that I sounds like the highly most absurd... recommend reading the moon is a harsh mistress it is one of the best science fictions written and it gives you a step by step like how to start a, a revolution within your society um and <laughs> it's really great like in depth like uh, nitty gritty details of how this um how like you start a um revolt without getting caught and like sowing uh disgruntlement within the population and eventually organizing so that you have a percentage of the people behind you and then, Haven't uh, you seen that people do that all the time these days? They just go on Twitter and say someone's mean, and then all of a sudden they have hundreds of people following them somehow. Yes, the uh, the world of the 1960s could never have fathomed the power of the Twitter of Tumblr shaming and and uh, uh, Twitter bots, but oh they made do with what they had. Mm-hmm. But what if you applied those 1960s ideals? To the modern day of the internet. Um, that's how you get jihadists. Ah, that's exactly go. what they do, actually. It's because it's kind of amazing reading the book, and I'm like, I've heard this before. Oh yeah, these cells they're talking about are called terror cells. <laughs> now, Gee. and it's like, anyway, all the same processes have been used by revolutionaries. Oh, a lot of yeah, this. I, I feel like the book was an inspiration for. A book by a Czech sci-fi writer that was uh, written in the eighties. A lot, a lot of this shit seems new, but it's all been because done before. All, there's just also about a guy on a moon, and there was a revol, a revol of the moonites. Well, it was a mining colony with terrible, terrible conditions, and they were, were like kind of pissed off, and then they made moon for themselves. It's kind of weird how so many stories. In fiction, science fiction especially, focus on 
people being on another planet mining. I mean, well, yeah, if you're going to go out there, yeah, well, it's one of the few reasons why you would ever do it. Go there. It's not exactly... You don't exactly go to another planet to, to chill and play with your uh, Nintendo Switch. Don't because... let play and chill. Yeah. And so Moon is not a planet. Well, it is it's now. bigger than Pluto. <laughs> it, it could be, but it gave up. Yep. It's it's like a planet dropout. It went to, to planet U and and it was like, hey, I want to be a planet. And then teachers like, fuck off. You can't even atmosphere. I mean, yeah. get good, good scrub and then just... You failed from atmosphere. Come on. Yeah. I don't think uh, atmosphere has is a category needed to be a planet though i mean look at mercury mm. it's just size it, it, yeah. it's not just size it's also uh clearing out your sphere of influence from other orbiting bodies oh um, yeah that, that's why that, the, so the planet the is in the asteroid belt okay then, not, then, then, uh, then why why didn't earth clean its presence of bob chipman of what movie bob what 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 the fuck with what's what's with movie Bob? What the fuck did he do? Because he's what? the size of a planet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Ha what the I'm fuck so happened? Confused. What the fuck happened to that guy anyway? I haven't heard from him in ages. I guess he stayed very relevant. He sure did. Like, well, oh, I, I did see a few okay. posts of him recently where he said a bunch of dumb shit and no one takes him seriously. That kind of reminded me of, of video games. Okay. And and there's... Also, there's this is going to be our closing uh, topic, so... There's just... this new game, Ass Effect. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. That's a thing that exists oh. now. And and I, I, I've seen a person doing the character creation. Well... Oh. It's all Africans. Made one Asian, but the rest is Africans. And he actually went to the skin tone slider, and it can't. It, it it just doesn't let you to not be an African. <laughs> In other words, you you can't be a white dude. Nope. Yep, the best that seems the... like a weird design choice. Basically, what the SJWs wanted from the star. It's Africa in space. Come on, guys! In the far future, there'll be Kangs. But, they'll, but, they'll finally reclaim the Egyptian technology of going to space and fuck up the Andromeda. What, what's the point in them letting you customize your character if they restrict you so uh, arbitrarily? Because well, progressive. You, you, can, you can set your hair color to 70,000 shades of brown or black and several several shades of blue. And I'm, mm. I'm not making it up. There, there, there's... there's there's pages and pages of brown and black, and then there's like a page of blue. <laughs> so, so in other words, it every single goddamn game lets you pick whatever the fuck skin color you might be. So it's usually you can choose between white, black, and some variations between. Well, this, this, this game lets you pick also any color that you want to be. Why would you want to be something else than black? Any color you want, as long as it's black. Exactly. As, as long Henry as it's the right color. Nineteen oh five. You know, that kind of reminds me of... Also, you know, it's, it's still Mass Effect, so they are shitty dialogue choices. It goes down to, I'm going to be nice, and or I'm going to be not nice. Also, you know what, what other sci-fi game that is taking place, play, plays in the far future came out recently? Torment, no. Night of Numenera, which is sort of spiritual successor to Planescape Torment. Only the and... I thought you were going to yes. say Doom. And it, it just so happens that Doom is nearly, nearly everybody in the game is also black. Of course, that game gets passed because, you know, it, it happens in so far future that eight major civilizations are, have risen and fallen. So everybody's just mixed up with everybody. And so everybody's sort of brown, except for the Albano, who's white, except she has black hair. I don't know how that works. But hey, artists. Mm -hmm. Artists who don't understand albinism. Yes, that, but that, you know, it, it's it's the universe of brown people, so I guess being just white is enough to being. I know well, that, I don't understand. The, the same the same thing happens Maybe in. Maybe uh, hair dye. The same. Th that. 
the same thing happens in, in uh, My Little Pony fan art when they have humanized characters and they're like, oh, okay, we got the main six, right? So let's see. Pinkie Pie's black. Never mind that he's got the bluest of bluest of eyes and curly she pink hair. And, but she's Must black. Must be now. a rainbow. And. Oh. But also typically, usually uh, Applejack is still like the white white girl. Jet black. In, in like in like ninety percent of all these renditions, they make Applejack the, the white chick well, because there was well, she's time, uh, somebody red. drew an Indian fa uh, the feather, not the dot. Indian feather shy, and, and they were like, "You are perpetuating the stereotypes. Kill yourself." And then she killed herself. Kill herself. Yeah, almost. Almost. Wait a minute. Aren't you talking about uh, that that? chick that drew the um, steven universe art uh wasn't she that probably too i don't know tam tam but there's lots of crazy shit i can't keep track of all of them <laughs> fair enough so yeah uh yeah mass effect um isn't isn't that franchise um didn't it's a that... franchise that already ended but it was successful so they are making more games and it's bioware so we just know it's going to be diverse okay, like I dragon age 3 so so yeah in other words uh after so, after mass effect 3 that is almost universally considered to be well shit well it, because well, that's the, the game was good, good game was play horrible shit. Story. yes yeah uh well you know it's by aware but i i still missed one option in in the dragon Age position very good fuck almost everybody i sorely missed a option to fuck a table right this was the only thing that wasn't included Oh, that this Team that this quite, are gonna that, get like go to Tumblr in droves and and protest this though. Mm. <laughs> uh, wait, there's there's a table you can fuck or no no that's the option I missed yeah right, because that's about the only thing you can't fuck in that game. Well, that, I I I find this very grievous. I mean, I mean there's there's several characters whose only defining <laughs> trait in in Dragon Age Origins uh, Origins sorry Inquisition. Whose only defining trends is that they are gay. We, we, we need to or, take... Or, or incredibly ugly British elf, because apparently when you put a woman into your game these days, she needs to be ugly. Uh, case in point, Mass Effect Andromeda, which happens to have Asari, who looks like the guy who played Ron Weasley. Okay. They seem to have combined the worst parts of Uncanny Valley with <laughs> the worst parts of not paying your artists. Yeah. The, the fun part about the the, <laughs> the the person who looks like Ron Weasley, even though she's a woman, is that her species is only female and is designed or evolved, whatever, to mate with males of other species, so they need to be very attractive. Huh? So she's a failure, is what you're it, saying. Yeah, this one just happens to look like Ron Weasley. <laughs> Good That's job. That's when they them to Andromeda. Actually, yes, they do all, the, all the horrible, ugly people and they sent to the other end of the universe. Here we are in Andromeda, all the ugly people, <laughs> to make our own ugly colony. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> this is one of the best plot points I've ever heard described. <laughs> All this shit, by the way, reminds me of what is currently going on with Disney. Well, there is multiple things going on with Disney, but relevant to this part. They announced that they are making a live-action Al Al Aladdin movie. And they are casting actual Arabic actors. That's yeah. racist. Well, that's, in my opinion, that is actually a good thing because, you know, it fits the setting. The problem is, it are the responses. Of course, SJWs are overjoyed that, yeah, now brown people will play, actual, brown people are going to be played by actual brown people. But there are some that say, oh, good, maybe this is the first step to banning white people from acting. <laughs> uh, it, I just don't understand. I, I mean, I don't care what, who, how they cast these movies. I don't know why they're making these movies. Uh, like they're just trying to. It seems to me like they're trying to do cheap in ca cheap cash ins 
on really popular nostalgic movies by remaking them in the cheapest way possible that is live action when these movies originally were animated which is very expensive and there's so many things you can do in an animated movie that you just can't really do in a in a real movie because it will just look like shitty cg it, unless it's all cg like wreck it ralph then it looks great but then when it's when it's star wars episode one and it, it it's it's all CG backgrounds, and it looks awful. <laughs> well, you you see what I'm getting at. Yes. So, yeah, like like what what what's the magic carpet ride in this live action movie going to be like? Or will they just leave that out as an inconvenient plot point that what you know doesn't translate well to live action? Or just pretty CGI'd much the entire sequence. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I mean, CG is getting really good. I imagine if they use enough I mean, things like a real carpet, you know. I mean, you can... It ties to them together. This is Disney. They're not going to half-ass it. Well, there's that, but there's also the, the actual actors interacting with the CG. No matter how good you make the CG work, it it's still going to look awkward. Cause... I don't know. Some actors are really good at it, so it depends on who they pick. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, that said, I mean, like, uh, the, the new... Um, uh, Beauty and the Beast came out. What did that look like? I don't know. I have no will to see it. Uh, pretty good. That would be your best indication of knowing how this one would turn out. Well, I did see a picture of the dress they put What's Her Face in, and it was unimpressive. I saw the picture of the gay guy that everybody's talking about because he's gay and Russia banned him. <laughs> What's oh, it? Yeah. Russia banned yes. him now? I thought it was. Russia approved it last I saw, and it was banned uh, they, in they, Malaysia. They it for people over 15 years of age, I think. Yeah, that was... Because those damn gays are not going to corrupt Russian kids, damn it. Yeah, so so in the West you got all these people be like, oh my god, we, we need to cram gay and LGBT stuff and everything. And Russia's like, we gotta keep it out of everything. Every mention of the gay should be gone. And both of these things could be considered social justice. Yes. Uh, Russia, Russia is more like, well, gays exist, but keep them out of child stuff. <clears throat> They're like, uh, g gays are not moral, morally acceptable, so uh, we, we take that as bad. That and is that is a form of social justice. It's mm -hmm. just the opposite of what the West <laughs> thinks is social justice. That, that's what I like about the Loud House in that regard because they, they have gay characters in there but it's not really being crammed down your throat. It's like well, these are characters. They exist. But this is why it doesn't count because every instance of gay characters needs to be of course. Yeah. It's like, this is a character. He, he likes ice cream. He hates blue. About being gay parents. No. Uh, actually, back, I, I did back. notice ever since that um, that cartoon that got cut from Cartoon Network a couple of years ago where they had the gay kiss and then people started retconning it immediately. I've noticed <laughs> Disney cramming more and more gay scenes into their shows. Well, yeah. As if, well, it it doesn't... Course... Th like, they're irrelevant to the plot. They're usually just background characters. But they are definitely gay. Mm -hmm. Because oh, they're that, that... men kissing and women kissing and holding hands and going there's, on dates. There's a difference in approaches, you know. There's the approach yeah. of, this, this is Frank. He likes ice cream, he hates blue. By the way, he's gay. And and then, uh, then we have things like the Dragon Age, where he's like, Look at this character! Look at how much of a faggot he is! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty gay. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to end this episode of Radio Rothingham, so... Oh, okay. And, unless there's one more thing you really want to bring up, Zekna. Well, there is also another, another shitstorm going on in connection to Disney. And that is the upcoming Pixar movie Coco, hmm. which many people accuse of being a ripoff of the Book of Life, and they may be right actually. That, it, some, Book of Life is... years, some years ago, the creator of, of the Book of Life, Gutierrez, went, know that is... me, went to Disney to pitch the movie and got rejected. Then he got together with Guillermo del Toro. And made the movie, and it was apparently a modest success in the U.S. At le and in Mexico. And now Disney is releasing a movie which see which seems to be almost the same. 
Oh, okay, the similarities this... are quite um, there. And this isn't it's... exactly an uncommon trend for Disney and Pixar, though, or Disney and DreamWorks. Like, if you look back through the histories, you, you've got a, a Disney made. I, I actually don't remember which order these were in, but uh, yeah, Bugs Life you had a Shark's and... Tale at the same oh, time yeah. as uh, Finding Nemo, and you had Bugs Life at the same time as Ants, and uh, there was a few other combinations, but it seemed to be a trend that one studio would make a movie, and then the other yeah. studio would make another similarly. And you, you, you had movie. Overwatch at the same time as Battleborn. There's mm -hmm. a name for this. Oh, and look it, up on TV dwelling. Traps. It's called Dwelling. Yes. And a lot of times it happens because um, one, it'll be scripts are circulated, but two, it'll also be have to do with fads at the it, time of people writing it, movies. It's, it's it's also called moving Overwatch release to the same month as B Battleborn, so you can kill it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, but it does not end there because there is a sh another shitstorm attached to this, <laughs> and that when she people start complaining. When people started complaining about this movie ripping off the Book of Life. SJWs jumped in and started defending right. it, saying that, hey, why are you complaining? Now we have more movies with Mexican representation. And then the actual Mexican ex Mexicans exploded with rage and started pointing out how many Mexican animated movies are aired, well, not aired, are, are viewed or are shown in U.S. cinemas each year. And nobody gives a damn about them. Oh, yeah, but those are made by white people. Yeah. Now, when white people <laughs> make a movie about Mexicans, everyone is suddenly saying how progressive it is, even though those people never, probably never even bothered to watch any actual wow. Mexican-made movie. Yeah. Because the well, only thing that the Blues pay attention to are what the whiteies are doing. Well, there's a simple explanation for that point, and that's because people watch movies that are pointed at their culture gasp it's like americans watch american movies made for americans America. because they reflect America. american ideals so and then we import them to everyone else and say <laughs> see have you seen this yet you should see it now and shove it down their throats until they give us more money and apparently i read recently that american major studios are also now dumbing down the dialogue in their movies uh, on purpose to make it easier to translate into Chinese because they also want to get the Chinese audience in on this. Oh. The Chinese audience is quite massive. Mm. Yeah. Cringe. So, yeah, though, like a lot of American recent blockbusters have had overly simplified dialogue for that express purpose. And they keep I'm the fine with simple dialogue. Well, yeah, but it also sometimes hurts the plot because they keep it very, very straightforward and formulaic. So I think good blockbuster movies shouldn't have a lot of dialogue and should be fairly simple and formulaic. But I'm a, I'm a fan Godfather. of movies that act more like short stories in, in the anyway. Mm. Godfather, mm. I'll raise you, Godfather. That, that's not a recent movie. Yeah, I'm still recording. I would not call it a blockbuster. Are, are we still recording? Yeah, so I'm going to... to Why? To, because I'm going to end right now. I'm going to Good. end it. I'll, 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 I'll take this plane and there will be no survivors being posting.exe. So, thank you for watching Ray Rothingham. Like, subscribe, do all good jazz. See you next time for a new episode. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to stop, uh, stop recording. Bye-bye.